How is coronavirus going to impact your online dating? Are you going to need to make changes or adjustments? Is it going to become worse? Is it going to become better? Well, I've noticed a number of trends jumping on online dating around the world, trying different countries at different stages of coronavirus outbreak, and I've noticed some very, very interesting trends. The short version is you're just going to have to change your strategy, but it won't necessarily become a worse experience. Want to find out more? Keep watching. So before I continue on with this video, I just want to make something clear. I am not here to make light of the coronavirus. Obviously, a lot of people like myself are pretty well covered. We're unlikely to get too sick, but a lot of people are going to die and it's a worldwide problem. I'm not saying, hooray, coronavirus is here. I'm just saying, let's focus on what we can do while coronavirus is going around and there's a worldwide tragedy at hand. So with that being said, let me get stuck in. Now, as coronavirus hits different cities, because it's going to hit different cities in different countries at very different rates, but we tend to see a very similar kind of curve appearing, where in the beginning, you just get a couple of cases. In fact, I think I'm going to throw this up on a graph. So in the beginning, you get a couple of little cases. The media starts to jump on it, but there's only sort of five cases in your country, six cases in your country, 10 cases in your country, 12. And then all of a sudden, it starts to take an uptick. And you'll suddenly notice that you've got 100 cases in your, in your city, 120, 150, 200. And what happens is the media will start to talk a lot about coronavirus in your country. It's going to be going on local reports, uh, national reports. You're going to see the prime minister, you, you, the, 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 the president, whatever you've got in your country, start to talk a lot about it. It's going to be front of mind for everyone. And then all of a sudden you start to get this massive upsurge where you get the um, you know, the, the geometric effect where it just starts to in increase dramatically. And that's when everything starts to go into shutdown. You get closed borders, schools, uh, mass events, sporting, everything starts to close down. Shopping centers start to close. And that's where the scary stuff really begins for people because they feel like they're going to sh get shut off of the world. But uh, what happens is I've noticed that online dating be starts to behave differently at different points along this curve. So that's what I'm going to talk to you all about. And actually, in some ways, it actually improves online dating, but, but you'll see what I mean as I go. So let's talk about where I am right now in the Gold Coast of Australia. Now, Australia is just about here in the, uh, in the, in, in the, the curve here. Basically, we're just starting to notice an increase now. Uh, we haven't hit anything scary, but as we know, it's very likely to happen. And it's all over the media. And what you get is that an interesting effect where nightlife has dropped quite noticeably. So a lot more men and women are staying indoors. In our case, a lot of women are staying indoors. But what's also happening is people still want to interact with people, so they're hopping on online dating. So what I'm seeing is that during the nights when women would normally be out and about clubbing and dancing and having fun, I'm noticing a much higher online rate of women on Tinder and Bumble and Hinge and Facebook dating and all the other online dating sites because they're just not out and about as much. People are starting to get a little bit squeamish about going clubbing. They're still going out, but with a far lower frequency. They're still, in general, feeling comfortable meeting with people one-on-one. -on -one. They're just starting to get very nervous around big group events. So what does this mean? Well, it actually means that what I found is it's easier right now, like when you're in that phase of the curve, and that, that'll only last for a couple of weeks in your country, but it's easier to get women out on dates in this period because it's easier to catch them online and have conversations with them. They're not going out and about as, as frequently around crowds. So they're not meeting as many other guys in real, in real life. And so it's actually a, a sweet spot. I hate to say it around coronavirus, but it's a sweet spot for dating in there. What I've noticed, though, as, as things start to increase and the panic starts to get higher and people get, start to get more and more um, paranoid. I mean, I'm already feeling paranoid about coronavirus going out, but everyone starts to get paranoid when, when things start to take off geometrically. Now, what I start to see here when I jump into countries like Italy, for example, and use Tinder there, is I see that Tinder usage goes through the roof. The reason being that everyone starts to become home isolated, right? They start to be quarantined themselves, both to protect themselves and to protect other people. Um, like big gatherings are reduced dramatically. People are staying home a lot more. Cabin fever is setting in. People are starting to feel a lot less socialized. And so social media usage is going up and up and up. And of course, with social media usage comes online dating usage because People still want to connect, right? Men still want to connect with women. Women still want to connect with men. So the, the online rate is going through the roof in these countries because people are on, like, they're just not working in the same way. They're working from home if they're working. And so they still get access to their mobile phones. So the rate is going up, which means a lot more women are online. 
The downside, and what really shifts the dynamic here when your country reaches this point with the coronavirus outbreak, is that at this point, women are feeling a lot more squeamish about actually going out of the house to meet guys. So it's going to be much harder to get women on dates. And so how do you need to change your strategy here at this point? Well, online, your strategy still more or less needs to be the same. Talking to girls, flirting with them, having fun, building rapport. And then what you try to do is you try to get their phone number and try to get them off the online dating. That is something you still want to do. Get them off Tinder, get them off Bumble, get them off those sites and get their phone number or get their kick or get their WhatsApp, whatever it's going to be, but get them off that platform. But once you've got them on these platforms, you're going to have a lot more time to actually establish relationships with them before meeting them. And so what I've noticed is uh, men and women both have to become a lot more particular about who they spend time talking to on these online platforms because you're not going to have time to really build rapport with 10, 15, 20 women constantly. So this is a really ideal period for creating sort of five, six, seven really great interactions with women. So you're finding women who do interact well with you, who you can build rapport with, who you can really click with and really have a fun time talking with regularly. And it's interesting because I noticed too in these countries that women are, are, are far more responsive now. So they're responding every day or they're checking in the morning. Hey, how's your morning going? Hey, how have you been today? This kind of thing is happening a lot more. The kind of conversation that didn't happen because it would be considered needy or too eager is happening a lot more frequently. So because women are doing it, I'm feeling safer to behave like this on these online dating profiles because people aren't socialized. They want people to interact with and say, hey, how was your day? How are you doing? What's happening in your world? And yeah, I'm finding that's the best strategy. Start creating really great online um, connections with these people. Uh, create relationships so that when the coronavirus starts to taper off, you've got these really great connections with a limited number of women you can go out and go on dates with and see if you really do click in the real world. And so this is a kind of a changing strategy as coronavirus hits its peak and starts to finally taper off. We don't know exactly how long that's going to take. I pray that it's only a month or two, but yeah, I, I hear lots of different reports, right? So we'll just have to see how it pans out. But I'm seeing that's going on. So that's how you're going to want to start using the online dating platforms. Start creating better relationships. Start focusing on rapport and banter and more regular check-ins is what I'm seeing a lot of. You just got to learn to alter your strategies. Online dating doesn't need to stop. It doesn't need to grind to a halt. Certainly cold approaching is going to stop. I've already heard of um, women, for example. I've got a coach who lives in, in New Zealand and his men knows that going out and doing cold approaching, women are getting less receptive in fact much less receptive there's this vibe of stick to your in-group and not, don't interact with outside there's a lot less trust right now so cold approaching is certainly going downhill now i know that now is a great time to work on your online dating i've got an online dating course school of online dating which you can go ahead and check out right now it's a complete back-to-back -back program which is going to teach you which online dating apps are best for you your personality type what you're looking for your age range your looks range your nationality what what apps are best for you then I'm going to go into how to create an ideal profile for that app, how to flirt with women, how to build rapport. I mean, this stuff is doubly critical during coronavirus because you can't meet in person as quickly. So these skills are going to be really big. Um, so I go through all of that as well as, of course, how to line up dates, how, where to go on dates, how to reduce flaking and everything else in between. Go ahead and check that out now by clicking the link. It's free to get started. Um, so I highly recommend you at least check that out. You'll learn a thing or two along the way. Let me know in the comments below again how you've experienced coronavirus so far and how that's impacted your online dating experience. I'm Damien. Have a fantastic week. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and check out some of my other videos on the side as well. Have a fantastic week and take care of yourselves. Goodbye.